filmsimplified.com. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and filmsimplified.com. And today we're going to be utilizing 30 nodes in order to achieve deep saturation. It's a very complex process. Of course not. We're just going to be achieving that using one uh, node. Uh, it's pretty simple. And by the way, uh, there is no such thing as a DDV color space. Uh, I just added that to the title, so you'll click on the video. Let's start. So what is deep saturation? It's a term basically that simply describes uh, increasing saturation without the saturation affecting the luminance of the image. In order to do that, we're going to be utilizing different color spaces, a particular color space actually. But first, let's see how color spaces work. Now, uh, you can change the color space and resolve for each node. So for example, if I right click on this node, there's a menu here where I can select a color space and there are many color spaces. Note that some of the color spaces are made up of three letters, like for example, HSL, HSV, LAB, and uh, the last two at the bottom, so Y, U, V, and X, Y, Z. So these color spaces are a bit different. In order to understand how these work, first you have to understand that currently we are in the RGB color space. What does that mean? Note that I'm on color bars now, so I'm not on primaries wheels, I'm on color bars. And this is basically the color wheel just represented in RGB. So R is for red, G is for green, and B is for blue. Shocker. So based on the fact that I'm in the RGB color space, here I have three controllers where each controller controls a particular channel. So red, so notice this increases red, uh, green increases green or reduces green, and blue is for blue. Great. So we have three controllers that control three channels. However, we can change that. So we can remap different things to these controllers. So I will right click on this node, go to color spaces, and here I will select the HSL color space. So H is for hue, S for saturation, and L is for lightness. So hue, saturation, and lightness. If I select this color space, if I click it, now this node is working in the HSL color space. That might sound scary, especially that when you change controllers, like colors go all over the place, things don't seem to react the same way you're used to, and the saturation works in a weird way. Let's reset, and I promise you, once you understand how this works, you're gonna be like, seriously, that's so easy. So it's pretty simple. Now we mapped the three controllers we have. So this controller that used to be red is for hue now. So note that if I control this, I'm changing the hue of the image. So remember, we had the hue controller here in RGB. So now we just moved the hue controller. So red, even though the red controller still looks red, so it has a red color, but now it controls hue. And as you might have guessed, the middle one is for saturation. So hue, saturation, luminance, or lightness. So I will increase this controller and notice that now I'm controlling saturation. And if I reset, the last one is for brightness. So. When you switch to an HSL color space, all you're doing uh, is you're basically remapping the controller for hue, saturation, and lightness instead of red, green, and blue channels. So the RNGB controllers here, this one, for example, controls the saturation highlights. This is saturation midtones and saturation in shadows or lift, which is slightly different than shadows, but they're almost the same thing. And that's when you get some of the weird things we discussed before, like in the uh, color lab uh, space. So for example, if I uh, right click here and switch to the um, the lab color space. Note that we still have the same controllers, but we changed the mapping. So for example, the R now controls the brightness of the image, so red. The green controls an axis, so it moves the image between magenta and green, and the blue controller now moves between yellow and uh, blue. So three letters color spaces simply maps different aspects to these three controllers that you have. It's like changing the controllers on your joystick, that's it. So how can we use that to achieve this deep color thing we discussed? Now, one of the color spaces is HSV. Now we have HSL, hue, saturation, lightness, and HSV stands for hue, saturation, and value. So this might seem confusing, but it's pretty simple. The main thing about the HSV color space, or one of the main things, is that you can increase brightness without losing saturation. So brighter colors are allowed to be more saturated. 
Now, this is not always a good thing, but it will allow you to achieve some pretty cool effects. For example, I will reset. So now we have this image here. Let's move to this frame and I'm going to increase saturation, just regular saturation. So this is, I'm just going to delete this node and then you add a new regular node and I'm going to increase saturation and beautiful. We just increased saturation. Note that when I increase saturation, I also increase the brightness of the colors. So this is just the regular behavior. So let's just increase saturation. Now I'm going to add a new version, delete this node, add a new node, right click, and I'm going to switch the color space to the HSV color space. And now notice something very important. The green controller now does not control green anymore. It controls saturation from the perspective of the HSV color space. That simply means that we can increase saturation without increasing brightness. That's basically all it means. However, there's something very important. Notice here that we have four different green controllers. So we have the offset green, then we have the gain, gamma, and lift. So let's start with offset. If I increase offset, note that yes, the colors became more saturated while not getting more, uh, while not getting brighter, but we introduced a lot of artifacts into the image and the image looks really weird now. In order to avoid that, you just simply need to use the gain controller most of the time. So I'm just going to use the uh, gain in green, increase saturation and notice the colors. So now I'm going to switch to the previous version. So this is the previous version. Notice that when we increase saturation, we also increase the brightness. Notice this area here in the bike. And now when I go to the next version, so the version where we have deep saturation, uh, notice that the colors increased without increasing the saturation and the image looks way better. Notice how deeper and more beautiful the colors look. Uh, of course, it's a bit oversaturated, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, and if I switch to the original image where we increase the saturation using the regular method notice the difference in colors. At this point you might be very happy or like oh my god look at the colors here they look way better until you notice the door in the background. Note that this is the regular color version so this is the version where we increased color using regular saturation and this is the one where we use this new technique and notice how blue is just out of control. That's because the HSV color space utilizes some trickery with the blue channel in order to prevent colors from becoming more saturated, um, uh, uh, from losing saturation when they get brighter. So how can we solve that? Well, there are two things. First of all, don't increase saturation a lot. Keep your eye on the blues in the image because in this uh, method, usually blues, they get out of control really fast. However, you can always add a new node and then the new node simply go to uh, hue versus saturation, uh, select the blue colors and just control their saturation separately. And this will allow you to control the colors you know, but it's fair to say that this is an uncontrollable method because you see in DaVinci Resolve, when you increase saturation, a lot of tricks happen in the background in order to make the saturation or the operation look natural. And this method is a bit raw, so uh, you need to always keep an eye. Let's take a look at some bad examples or like uh, problems that you will run in if you use this method and how to uh, solve these problems. The first thing we discussed is to simply add a new node and reduce the saturation of blue, which will always get you better colors. Let's take a look at the original image or one before using deep saturation and this one. This looks way more cool. I'll just click here and increase saturation even more. Uh, we're always losing information to do in the background. Just keep that in mind. The next problem you will run into is when you're using uh, auto color correction, try not to use auto color correction on the nodes before this one because they try to correct the blue channel and that usually makes things a bit more difficult to deal with. Let's take a look at an example. So I'm going to auto correct this image. So now we just auto corrected it. I'm going to add a new node, right click, color space, uh, HSV, increase the green channel and notice the weird artifacts we have on his clothes now. Again, Again, it's a problem with blue. Uh, the blue values tend to um, get out of control in the shadows a bit and you get this artifact. So how to deal with that? It's pretty simple. I'm going to add the node before this one. So I'm going to add a node before it. So this is the node where we applied this technique and this is the node before it. I'm going to switch to log and here I'm going to lift shadows up a bit and notice how we corrected this. 
problem. This will help in certain times when the blue colors and shadow get a bit out of control. And this will also work for this image. Notice that here we have uh, some nice colors. Okay, I wouldn't call these nice colors, but I mean, we managed to increase contrast without losing saturation. Highlights, the image looks cool until you notice this red patch to the top. It doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to add a note before this one. Again, make sure I'm in log and increase uh, log a bit until we get rid of this weird color artifact. However, just remember this is a bit raw and you are going to run into issues. So it's always advisable to, the colors are really nice. So that's why a lot of people use this technique, but you always need to keep an eye on the image. So there are no weird patches and no weird artifacts, but the colors you get out of this technique are really nice. So let's try it on this image, for example, just going to bring this down, this up, great. I'm going to add a new node, right click, color space, HSV, increase green. Again, we're just increasing saturation highlights and notice how much more beautiful the colors look. Maybe I overdid the saturation, so let's just dial it down. That's more beautiful. Notice this color here in the background. Notice that when I increase saturation, the colors actually get a bit dimmer instead of getting brighter. This looks really cool. And then I'm going to add a new node and maybe just now this node is working regular RGB. So we're back to RGB color space and I'm going to bring shadows down a bit and the image looks way more beautiful. So notice how easy it was to achieve uh, these colors using this technique. And I hope this shed a light on, on how color spaces work. Like for example, I had a video, I guess a year, a couple of years ago, um, where we discussed the LAB color space. And in that video, what I did was, um, let's just uh, reset this to explain this in more clear terms. So let's delete all this, add a new node, right click, and I'm just going to the LAB color space. Now, note that in that video, I said that I, I didn't want to explain this at the time, but um, I said when you increase the the, uh, the brightness, the image becomes more uh, red, and when you reduce it, it becomes more blue. Well, that's because you're moving more than one controller at a time. So in the LAB color space, notice that this makes it yellow and this makes the image is red and uh, when you reduce the uh, gain of these two channels the image becomes blue and this provides a very nice thing where when you increase the brightness and you reduce the brightness you're actually moving the highlights and shadows in exactly the opposite direction so that's why we said that you should increase gain and in the LED color space and reduce gamma and this should get you to a more contrasty and nice image where the colors are in direct contrast of each other at the time. I hope this explained that technique in a better way. Now, uh, I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com